jiving, jiving, jiving the world. Ah, been jiving the world. Heavy metal news, and we're having fun. Everybody in town, they know where to run to the jive talking with Shane D. This was supposed to be Man of War, but now it ain't. Jiving, jiving, jiving the world. Jiving, jiving the world. Uh, uh, uh. Jiving, jiving, jiving the world. I've been jiving. Welcome, welcome, one and all. I was trying to do Fighting the World uh, by the amazing band Manowar, and it just really felt the shit there. I'm, I apologize about that. It turned to shit on me. I want to welcome you back to episode 60 of Jive Talking with Shane Diablo. You might ask yourself, Shane, what do you do? What is Jive Talking all about? Well, frankly, it's me, Jive Talking, with a bunch of you fine, fine folks in the comments. Uh, but we also do heavy metal and hard rock news right here. Uh, you can go to these places and read these stories, or you can come here and get a few of them collected up and told to you in a horrible fashion with terrible reading, um, bad jokes, and uh, horrible music. Uh, but uh, I thank you for tuning in. You can listen and watch on Spotify or listen, watch, and comment on the uh, YouTube video. And then what we do is the following week, we read your comments from the prior. Uh, let's get right into it. You, there's no need to tell you who this is. This is the Knights in Satan service. That's right. You got uh, uh, Fake Ace and Fake uh, Peter there. And you got Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. That's right, Kiss. And Paul Stanley, he says he doesn't rule out one-off Kiss concerts after final show of End of the Road Tour, which has been going on for about, what, three years now? pandemic included, right? Uh, we're always interested in what Paul has to say about things, uh, and he loves to tell us, doesn't he? Uh, so let's get into this and find out. In a new interview with Yahoo! Entertainment music editor Lindsey Parker, KISS frontman Paul Stanley, was asked if there are any plans for him and his bandmates to do anything special to celebrate their 50th anniversary. He responded, as transcribed by the blubber mouth, Here's one. You want more, don't you? The fact that we still not only survived, but thrived is special enough. There's nothing special to do. I'm thrilled that's we're, we're, that we're still here. I'm thrilled that the fans are still here. The fans seem thrilled, and we're still here. We're coming to the end of the of this farewell tour, end of the road tour, not farewell tour. That happened in 1996. So to speak, we pretty much know when we're ending and where, when we're ending. And when we're ending, when we're ending, and that's it. And that's it. Stanley also touched upon the fact that the end of the road tour was originally scheduled to conclude on July 17, 2021 in New York City but has since been extended to at least two, late 2023. The trek announced in September 2018 following a KISS performance of the band's classic song, Detroit Rock City on America's Got Talent. I keep trying to contact those guys, kind of show them my highlight reel, and they won't have anything to do with me. Um, this tour, interestingly, seemed to go on forever, Paul said. That's because... We lost two years to COVID. People go, oh my God, this tour? Well, yeah. There's two years that didn't count. And it's a big world. So there, so there've, there've been, is that, is that a real word right there? So there've, so there've been some countries that I thought we were finished with. And the fans and the promoters want us to come back. So we have shows to do. The end is in sight, more so than people know. Stanley confirms, but we'll have an announcement about that in the not-too-distant future. Oh, well, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, asked if the KISS farewell tour will end with the band's July 15th performance in Norway, ooh, 
which is the last listed tour date on the official KISS website. Paul said, well... It would be only makes it would only make sense for us to play the states, and I think it would make sense that we would end up where we started back in the New York City groove. I'm in a New York state of mind. Get yourself a diet coke if you know what that is, and get yourself a diet coke if you know this. Da 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 da. Shh. Ah. If you can name that in the comments. I'm going to say you're damn good. Uh, you got to remember the Gene Simmons, Kiss bass player vocalist, and I started this together when I was 17 and he was 20, 21. It's 50 years later. We've lived pretty much inter pretty interesting lives. And we've had families and children and huge sales, houses and stuff. Shane Diablo did a video on me selling one of my houses in California. You might want to watch that on YouTube. In terms of albums and concerts, so it's big part of who we are. It's a big part of our lives. So that final show, yeah, that's momentous. And it's going to hit hard than I think we know. It's going to hit harder than I think we know. And we know it's going to hit hard, baby cakes. Asked whether the last concert of KISS and the road tour will truly mark the band's final performance or if there's a chance of one-off shows. A Las Vegas residency, perhaps? Ooh, la, la. Uh, how about an Atlantic City residency? In the future, Stanley said, I really can't say, but it is the last of any kind of regular shows or touring. Paul's going to still do the soul band that he wants to do. I bet he says that in here. It's just time, he explained, and in the same way, it's time-consuming. And physically, it's grueling to do what we do. And they'll tell you all day long and all night. No one can get up there with big boots on and, and stretchy pants and do what they do. They'll, Gene and Paul will tell you that over and over. Hell, if I could go on stage in my jeans and t-shirt, give us another 10, 15 years easily. But what we do is a whole different sport. I mean, we're athletes. We're running around on stage with 30, 40 pounds of gear, and it's not possible to do it that much longer. So, we're not like other bands, but technically, you could make that stuff. I mean, look at Guar. You think they're aching about their, their joints? I mean, they're half your age, but uh, nevertheless, you could get that stuff done. Go ask any cosplayer on TikTok. How do we, can you make us kiss costumes that don't weigh 40 pounds? We're old people now. They'll do it. Um, so we will do more, will we do more shows or one-offs? I really have no idea, Paul admitted. He admitted that. But this is a real clear mindset that the touring days and doing those kinds of shows, that's over. So there you have that. Sharon Osborne she says she saved, so she got somebody out of jail. I'm seeing Biscuit Man, Limp Biscuits. And there's Sharon Osborne, and she got him out of jail. It says Sharon Osborne saved a new metal band's legend from jail after an onstage sex act at Ozfest. Oh my good God. Was Biscuit Boy doing some cray cray? I bet Biscuit Man was doing some, he was doing some crazy shit. Hmm. In a more fair world, Santa Barbara's Snot, oh, it was Snot, would have gone on to become one of the biggest bands of the first wave of new of the new metal era in the 90s. I saw Snot in a small basement, uh, and I, I didn't really think too much of it. Um, and then I saw Limp Biscuit open for Faith No More on the, um, what was the Faith No More record about the, the uh, it has Collision on it? Get down in the comments below and tell me it's got uh, album of the year. And I was like, what the fuck is going on with this? It was like the village people because they were, all had their own different thing going on. And uh, and uh, uh, the guitar player that dresses like a monkey, he was only, he had like a bob haircut, gothic looking guy, black lipstick, and the bustier. So it was very early on. And then the new metal exploded. Uh, let's get into this. Uh, led by their charismatic and uber-talented vocalist, Lynn Strait, the band churned out a phenomenal full-length called Get Some, 
which landed them a coveted spot on the second stage at OzFest in 1998. Tragically, Strait would die, rest in peace, sir, in a car accident just a few months after OzFest wrapped, cutting short Snot's bright future just as they were starting to catch well-deserved waves. While only active in the scene for a short while, Lynn still made quite an impact on his musical peers. Soon after his death, a venerable cast of heavy metal elite music elite like Max Cavalera, Ozzy Osbourne, Jonathan Davis, and more came together both to grieve his loss and honor his legacy on an album called Straight Up. I knew nothing about this. I would love to check that out. This is why we're doing the freaking jive talking, guys. Many of those friendships were forged on Snot's wild OzFest run, with one particular wild public sex event during Lip Biscuits set the summer <clears throat> forever uh, what the summer forever part of Straits legacy and lore. What OzFest run with one particular wild public sex event during Limp Biscuits set that summer forever part of Straits legacy and lore. Okay. I feel like I was needing a comma in there somewhere. Interesting enough, though, the real hero of the story is one bleeding bloody Sharon Osborne herself. But before we go to uh, get too ahead of ourselves, here's snot guitarist Mikey, do uh, Mikey Dooling recounting what happened. So Lynn Strait had the, this bright idea that he would try to get some attention to snot because we weren't, we just weren't getting the attention that we wanted. We were on the second stage at OzFest, but then you had Limp Biscuit and all these other big bands on the main stage. So Lynn, like how I am going to get, like how am I going to get some attention? What he did was Limp Biscuit had a 13 foot high toilet as a prop on their stage. That does not surprise me at all. Every day, and what Fred Durst would do, they had some stairs that would walk him, Fred, up through the toilet bowl, and he could stand on this giant toilet bowl rim, and he could flush Britney Spears down the toilet. Where's this video? Britney Spears down the toilet, Hanson, the Hanson band, down the toilet, and the president down the toilet. Yeah, they're doing uh, Gore's act. So Lynn had a bright idea. I'm front row watching Limp Biscuit, and all of a sudden, out of the toilet comes Lynn Strait. No shirt on. Giant snot sticker across his whole chest. Aha! And there he is. He's on the toilet. He, here, I'll scoot this up a little bit so you can take a peeksy doodle. Uh, he comes all the way out, and he's got that chick, that one who's dealing out blowjobs on the tour with a doggy chain around her neck. What? He pulls her up on the toilet rim and he's butt naked, bro. Lynn's totally naked and she blew him in front of 22,000 people. Well, I didn't see it going there. And Jesus Christ, look at the toilet. They said, make it look like mine at home. That's what Fred Durst said. Make it look exactly like mine. I haven't scrubbed it in years. So the police and the security come running out on stage and Lynn runs down the back, gets his clothes and runs backstage into Ozzy Osbourne's dressing room. Bleeding bloody, what are you doing about him, mate? And locks the door behind him. So now we get security, maybe some police banging on Ozzy Osbourne's door and Lynn's in there with Sharon Osbourne, butt naked, and Kelly and Jack Osbourne are like babies at the time, 8 and 13 years old, or something like that. And Lynn walked in there, butt naked, dick out, and all the sorry, 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 the cops are after me. He's getting dressed, you know, and actually Sharon was really cool about it and says, she'll come out. And she'll talk to the police and negotiate a little peace moment. Lynn then came out. They took him to ma uh, the makeshift jail on the property. It's a festival, so they have a little area that they made a jail out of, right? Uh, it was just on the side of the stage. There was a fence, and you can you can open it and go down in the side there. And then they have okay. And then they have a little walkway. And what else is there? And they actually have a little table, police, where they write you a ticket or whatever and take your photo of you and let you go. Let's get on with it. Pretty wild story. Sharon Osbourne often gets a broad rap 
a bad rap, not a broad rap. But you have to respect the fact that she's clearly looked out for the artists on her toes, treating them like part of the family without question. Most mother. So is she going to talk at all? Oh, I thought she was going to get in there and go, Hello, police officers. Now, my husband is Ozzy Osbourne, and I'm on The View. And please do not arrest this man who just got a blowjob on top of a giant toilet in front of a bunch of children. Here he is, Frumpy Dump Dump, doo doop doo. I said we're never going to talk about Glenn Frumpy Dump Danzig because he likes to give me, dish out freaking uh, strike. He gave me a strike on my channel, him and his goons. But Glenn Danzig's announcing, surprise, surprise, Danzig sings Elvis. Love me tender, hey, love me too, has he? That's what you're going to hear a lot of. Danzig sings Elvis concert at Hollywood's, ooh, what's that word? Montalba, Mont, Mont, Montalban Theater, whatever. Glenn Danzig will play a special, very special, Danzig sings Elvis show on February 10th at the historic Montalban Theater in Hollywood, California. Glenn's last, oh, he's done it before. Danzig sings Elvis concert took place in October 2021 at the legendary Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. Danzig's collection of Elvis Presley covers, appropriately titled Danzig Sings Elvis, was released in April 2020. I got to hear some of that, but I, you know, he really gets under my skin. You give me a strike, that gets under my skin. Tracks that appear on the effort include, Is, is it so strange? And, into your loving arms and one night in Bangkok makes a hard man humble. Uh, which can be streamed below. We'll never stream it. I'll never, I'll never stream it. Uh, asked what it was, uh, it was about one night. It stood out to him. Glenn told Rolling Stone, It's great song. There's a lot of different versions of it, and I did while I was in the studio with multiple vocal takes. I did some little, some a little softer, some a little harder, some in between. The one I decided on is the one I like the best. Regarding how Dan Danzig sings Elvis came together, Danzig said, "Well, I happened. What I happened was." In between doing it, I've been working on a million other things, like terrible horror movies. I mean, just painfully bad. I'm working on other records. It started out as, I'm going to do Danzig Sings Elvis EP, and it can be four or five songs. And eventually, while I was doing other records... We have downtime, and I just turned to Tommy Victor. That's Tommy Victor's fantastic. He's in prong. We love Tommy Victor. He's the vocal guitarist for prong. And said, Oh, yay! Let's do another Elvis track or two. He's like, Okay. Eventually, it became an album. Danzig previously covered Presley's Trouble on his eponymous band's Thrall Demons, Demon Sweat Live. I always used to say it was Demon Sweets. Let's listen to Th Demon Sweets from, we did that, that's when Mother, remember when Mother became a big hit again all of a sudden? It was crazy. It, in the 90s, it became hit again. But uh, anyways, EP in 1993, he also recorded a version of Let Yourself Go. And uh, 2005 on, on his album Skeletons. Danzig was formed in 1987 by Glenn's involvement with horror punks, the Misfits, and gothic hard rockers Sam Hain. Danzig's latest record, Black Laden Crown, uh, came out May 2017 on Evil Live Records nucle slash Nuclear Blast Entertainment. So that suits di distro in it. I said, love me tender, love me. Valentine's Day weekend. Look at that face. Is that what you want staring at you? When you're saying, honey sweets, my, 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 my sweet little honey buns. And this guy's going, I 
nothing but a hound dog. Hello, time. Whatever. That's what we say to Frumpy Dumps. I used to love the guy. After you give me that strike, that's it. I'm over. Look at this guy. You might. Who do you think that is? No, he's wearing a Soundgarden shirt. It's not Chris Cornell. It is Tim Ripper Owens. He has dropped 50 freaking pounds. Here's the problem that I have with it. Is that um, I think fat people like me, as you lose weight, look weird. You know him a certain way. He's got the chunky little chipmunk cheeks and everything. And now you're like, yes, he's healthier. He's probably happier and all that stuff. He's looking weird to my eyes. And that's exactly what you'll think of me when I'm looking like a, 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 just a beefcake. Just a real sex pot, you know. Ex-Judas Priest singer Tim Ripper Owens has lost 50 pounds since last summer. Former Judas Priest singer Tim Ripper Owens says that he has lost more than 20% of his body weight since he changed his diet last year. Earlier today, Tuesday, January 17th, Owens took to his Instagram to share a full body mirror selfie, and he included the following message. I started working on losing weight last summer with eating less and hitting the gym every day, which I've always done. It's been a slow process, but there. But here's how it's gonna. It's going. I'm at 165 pounds. I've lost 50 pounds, four inches off my waist, and I've gotten all new clothes. He added, "I would like to thank everyone for their kind words along the way." Yeah, let's see what's gonna say about. Uh, did they release that little record that he was gonna put out with the Jamie Josta? Let's find out. Owens recently released a solo EP, Return to Death Row. The effort was produced by Jamie Josta, Hatebreed, and Nick Bellamore, Josta, and D. Snyder. Players on the EP, which contain Owens' heaviest songs yet, include Nick Bellamore, Charlie Bellamore, D. Snyder, and ex Toxic Holocaust on guitar, and Chris Bodet, Josta, in Ontario. Now, with those names, what that tells me, budget rock. It might be the greatest EP you've ever heard in your life, but Jamie Josta says, let's try and keep as much of the money pie from this thing into the the proper hands, right? So there's the selfie. Look at that. Looking great. Looking svelte. Probably feeling, you get feeling more positive. See, he's, he's at the doctor's office right now. They just had him bend over. You know, let's check the old prostate while you're here. Uh, it is time for your comments. I had one more story here about um, uh, uh, Jeff Tate getting tattoos, but we're going to swing into the comments. Now, Tom uh, G here, he's he's got a link and I've clicked the link because I didn't know what was up. And so I will be sharing what that because I don't know what this is going to do. It's an intro. And he's got a puppet of me. But you can't, you probably can't see this in the video because. So we're going to have to, uh, Jesus, see when I do that, it's just, I, I'm, I, I don't know why I do that. Uh, but I will be sharing that, posting that, doing whatever that I got to do with that. But he, it's, he's got a freaking puppet. It looks like me. Tom G, I love you. Thank you. That gets a heart, it gets a thumb, and I wish there was something else I could give you, but I can't. Um, King Snake Jake. I always want to say King Jake Snake, but it's not. It's King Snake Jake coming in. So Shane, all this mammary talk has brought me to a request. How about I Don't Mind by the Ass Kicking Drain STH. We have done that on this channel, sir. Thank you, kind sir, mentally yours. I give you the heart. And uh, we have done it. I know that we've done the beautiful, beautiful, what were they, Swedish band? Uh, the Girls Drain STH. Stockholm, Sweden. That's what STH stands for, Stockholm. We have done that. Go look for that, Jake. Go look for that. Oscar, in case Mike misses another episode, and I do believe he did. I think he hates us. Maybe he's just having a time away. He doesn't have to do it every day, you know, every time, you know. In case Mike misses another episode, what's the difference between a snowman and a snowwoman? Snowballs. 
You're not wrong about that. And it's already got two little thumbsy upsies. I'll give you another one. We'll give you three on that. Uh, Oscar here again. I called Frank Costanza. Frank Costanza, after seeing this episode, he assured me there will be seven pairs of the bro expedited overseas to Aussie this Monday. Oh, yeah, that's the Seinfeld. The bro. The, it's the bra for the man. I mean, that picture looked like he had, he was well built there, right? Uh, Ryan Weatherman. Ryan Weatherman Holt here coming in. It says, don't shit on Buzzo. He's got the best laugh in all of rock and roll. I don't know what King Buzzo, I mean, I, that's, that's probably like a unicorn. Because he always seems to be grimacing and angry. And I love me some Melvins. I've seen him twice. Um, but, um, yeah, I'll give you a heart for that. Mega stain rikes, strikes again. Well, I don't know what that means, but you're getting a heart anyways. Miss Althea coming in here. The dumbstruck fool says, who are these fools opting out of the theme song, especially after all those sexy lyrics? Come on. Uh, you say Hetfield looks like a U.S. postal worker. I say a high school algebra. Yes. A maybe earth science teacher. Yeah. All I have to say between him and Mustaine is blah, blah, blah. And the Jamie Josta coffee comment reminded me to mention that I recently discovered that Motley Crue is in cahoots with Brutality Coffee Co. They have a custom dark roast blend called Kickstart My Heart. Of course, you have to, right? You have to have that. And you can buy it in a bundle with a t-shirt for about 50 a pop. Cha-ching! Yeah, another thing that I noticed, too, in the stories this week is Evanescence, Iron Maiden. I, I, you probably already seen the story I did on the Iron Maiden necklaces. Uh, Korn, they all have makeup lines coming out. Korn's doing like a freak on a leash or whatever that was, follow the leader. Um, makeup pack. Okay, that's weird. How many more bands can Mike Portnoy play with? And he has become quite the go-to guy. He has become quite the go-to guy. I'm glad she confirmed that it's Mike. Because I go Mark, Mike, Mark, and I don't bother to look it up. I'm, I'm confirming now through Miss Althea, Mike Portnoy. We're, doesn't want to spit it out. The Portnoy. Portnoy. And what, where's that name from? Can someone tell me? There is no way that the statement from Vince Neil was written by him. 100% agree. It sounded like a former White House staffer took care of it. And we all know he is not of that of the caliber. Okay, I, I just my eyes go goofed. Yeah, we, not, we all know that he's not of the caliber. I am actually surprised he wasn't hit with COVID some time ago. All things considered, but I do honestly wish him a speedy recovery. Yes, he needs all the prayers that he can get when you're overweight and you're a heavy drinker. And that's he's both of them. I am not a heathen, for God's sakes. Okay, I'm going to finish that, that sentence. He was hit with the COVID some time ago, all things considered, but I do honestly wish him a speedy recovery. I am not a heathen, for God's sakes. Um, on the subject of crackers, I think you were thinking of chicken in a basket, biscuit. Chicken in a biscuit. Yeah, that's what it is. God, she's good. Another Nabisco product. So wheat thins, triscuits, chicken in a biscuit. All Nabisco. They got the money. Uh, that still exists and is very underrated in my opinion. I love chicken in a biscuits. Those things actually go great with crab dip. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan of horseradish too. And can someone explain to me? I looked downstairs and someone bought kosher Kosher horseradish. What the hell does that mean? Can someone please explain that in the comments? Uh, you were dead on with Jason, not Justin or Jeremy. Jason Bateman. I, I, I would have sold the farm that it was Jeremy or uh, 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 Justin. I swore it was Justin Bateman. Jason Bateman. Maybe you got muddled because you were subconsciously thinking of his sister, Justine Bateman. She was on with Michael J. Fox on uh, Family Ties. And here she is, who was best known as Mallory on Family Ties. See, I try to cut her off at the, so I can have the answer first. 
and then I read and I see if I'm right. Valerie Harper. Okay, this is this is it. Valerie Harper is probably best known as Rhonda. That's the face that I get is the lady from from the other show one day at a time. But but yeah, I know who Rhonda was on on the Mary Tyler Moore show and then her spin-off series Rhoda. Yes which was hilarious in my opinion. Bonnie Franklin played the mother on One Day at a Time. Fantastic. I, 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 love, I love that kind of stuff. Eric coming in. Hey, Shane, it's your pal Eric. I was wondering if you could do a first reaction to Shining's, oh boy, Lat Os Ta Alt from Varanda. Awesome metal from Sweden. Cheers. Okay, well, you're going to get a thumb up because if I give you a heart, then I've got a reply, and I don't know if we're get, if we're doing that. Because Eric, Eric, are you listening? The comments are for for fun, not requests. But uh, but I'm glad you you commented anyways. Shane Brady coming in. Look into Doctor Derek Naus's videos. Shane, why is he some kind of doctor of heavy metal? No one's a bigger doctor of heavy metal than me. Okay, please, thank you. Jolly Jake Lavelle coming in. Slayer, not so much on the Am I Evil Encore. Okay, uh, we were, I was talking about them beating the shit out of the, when they did the Big Four concert and all of them came out on stage and picked up instruments. Jolly Jake here is telling me, Slayer, not so much on the Am I Evil Encore. It was only Dave Lombardo who participated in it if I remember correctly. You, now that you say that, I think you might be right. I think, I want to say that I watched that or something. I was like, where's Tom Araya? Where's where? But at the very end, they all come out because they've got to get a photo op or whatever. But Tom Araya is not a re playing reindeer games type of guy. You know, he's like, oh, I'm not doing none of that crap. You know? All right, you fine, fine freaks and freakoids. I want you to have a dang good week. I want you to enjoy yourself. Get that lawn mode. Do some stretchies. Do some uh, squats. Um, see if you can beat Tim Ripper Owens on losing some weight. Or see if you can put on 50 pounds. You know, if you're underweight, do that too. Let's, uh, I, I really don't want to just hit the button because it's going to do this. And I do not want that. So we're going to come over here. We're going to hit that. Boom. Oh. Let's get, a, let's get a nice tone. We're not monsters around here. Ooh. Put a little comment down below, and Shane is happy, don't you know? 